Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Brett. And welcome to BrettandMike.com. Hey, Brett, what are we talking about on this video today? Well, we're going to talk about Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 mm -hmm. and the changes that they've made to the operating system. That new user interface, The new right? user interface, the yes. The vilified, terrified, scary, hard to learn, impossible, and at least totally four or five freak out. Fides that we can think exactly. of, right? Exactly. Okay. Interface, because you'll find, I think, as people watch this video, it's not terrifying. It's not hard to learn. People come up and they're like, hey, what book should I get or what training class? We're pretty sure after watching the short video, you're you going to know, know everything you need to know. At the end of the day, it's a large size start button. And we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I like that. It's a large size start button. Yeah. So we're going to actually break this up into five different segments. This first mm -hmm. one you're watching is the introduction where we just kind of talk about really why Microsoft made the change. We'll get into that because yeah. it's interesting to understand it. And in section two, we'll be talking about navigation. Now that you have this new operating system, how do you get around? How do you find what you normally would, would in a previous version in this new version? You're going to want to customize your operating system. You're going yep. to want to customize that start menu. So we'll get to that in section three. Section four, we'll be talking about apps versus applications. In Windows 8, there's a new form of program that you'll download and install that functions a little bit differently than some of the applications uh, you traditionally use. And section five is basically everything else we forgot, along with settings and some of the, the final tidy up uh, uh, summarize of all that we've learned. We'll just back clean up on section five. Back clean up. Yeah. So we're in section one, so let's talk about why. Now, Brett, I know when I go around, people are always like, why, why did they have to, why did Microsoft have to change? I liked the old interface. I liked having the start button. Why couldn't you just put in a classic mode? Well, the, the fact is you have, to, you have to keep rolling forward, right? Now, when no, you, you don't. You don't have to. <laughs> They're going to say absolutely you don't have no, to. You know what? It's tr people, people say they're okay with change. People are not okay with change. No. And uh, what I want to do though, is pull a little bit from history. And if you look and remember, when the, fir when the start button was first introduced in Windows 95, there was a lot of apprehension and hesitation about people who didn't want to convert from Windows to work groups to this new interface. Yeah. Why do I have this little start button? Why do I have to put all my programs there? Why can't I have my Windows? People forget, and I know there's a lot of old timers out there like us, yeah. that uh, there were the start button was a change that most people, when it first came out, yeah. didn't like, didn't understand, didn't want it. Your favorite point, right? You yeah. have to hit the start button. You have to hit the start button to shut down. That makes no sense. I don't know what that was about, but that's the way it worked. And eventually, we got used to that, right? Yeah, we did. It started with that little gray button in Windows 95. It eventually grew to that big green Fisher-Price button in Windows XP. Ah. And then uh, it moved to a disk in Windows Vista, which none of you know because you know you bought it. And then in <laughs> Windows 7, you have this more modified disk. And, and that was kind of the last iteration. And every step along the mm -hmm. way, there were always people that said, I yeah. didn't like this, wanted to go back. Could you give me that classic mode? Well, why, why not put a classic mode back in, in the current version? Well, what we find is... If you have a classic mode, that's all you'll use and you'll never change. Now here's the thing. This is the thing that really kind of, um, kind of nails it down for me is the fact that whether you like it or not, the whole world is moving to touch. Right. It is. On displays, in kiosks, on computers, on all-in-ones. I challenge anyone out there, go to the bank, go to the movie theater, try to check in at an airport. Go to a mall or a kiosk, anywhere, you're going to see a touch screen monitor every T step. Touch is coming and there's just no way to stop, stop it. Now that said, Windows has supported touch since 2002. So that's what, 12 years now? Since 2002 it's supported touch. I bet people have a hard time believing that because... Because, no why? because nobody it. used yeah, it. Right. Because it was, a, it was an interface designed for mouse and keyboard. Oh, but wait, okay, so if no one used it, why would Microsoft go there now? Well, because the hardware is coming, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of a chicken and egg, cart and horse, whatever two items you want to put together is. And it's the kind of thing where, where the operating system has to be ready because all of these devices are flooding in that support touch. I tell you, a, a great example, we've come to expect touch everywhere, whether it's in our car navigation screens or our home appliances or devices that we carry with us. Absolutely. I was checking out my daughter. We had a, a doctor's appointment. She's in high school. I was checking her out of high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a, a friend of ours with her daughter. They were doing the same kind of thing. They, were, yep. they had some appointment. And we're talking, and it became time for them to step up to the, the counter and check themselves out. 
And the mom walks right up, and man, she is just like, bam, 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 bam. And it took about 30 <laughs> seconds, and finally the daughter's like, Mom, it's not a touchscreen monitor. I'm so embarrassed, you know, and, and basically threw a fit. And we're all laughing because we've all yeah, been there. Absolutely. How many times have you thought something was touch and you sit and pound away? It's now become, not just for kids, even for, for older generation, they're used to it. And, and honestly, if you go into a retail store, I'm seeing a number of them that are now branding things. It's not, oh, this laptop has touch. It's, oh, keep in mind, this one does not. You only see the exceptions yeah. now in the retail. And since that market's moving forward, you mm -hmm. really have to think about an operating system yeah. and redesign it with that in mind. So those other versions of Windows had touch in it, but they weren't primarily touch design. And, and that's the thing that I want to I, I wanna reiterate at this point is that touch does not replace a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. It's, it's just another avenue to accessing and working with your data. People freak out all the yeah. time as we go do uh, demonstrations and they're like, oh, you touch the keyboard, oh, you touch the mouse. You know what? People should use whatever device they like. The keyboard and mouse don't go away, uh, but you are extending out a whole new uh, interface available when you add touch. In some to cases, program. touch is more convenient. In other cases, keyboard is much more convenient. And a lot of you might be saying, yeah. we don't have touch screen, so this isn't relevant to us. We're going to show you how to use the amazing features of Windows 8, 8.1 with mouse and keyboard as well. It's not all yeah. touch. No, <coughs> you're right. My primary machine that I do work on every day is a non-touch machine. Same with me. And I use Windows 8 and love it. As do I. So, Part of the reason, if you have to redesign the operating system from touch, right, what, were, what was one of the key reasons why, um, you know, Microsoft can't, you can upgrade the hardware, um, but, but from a design perspective, what needed to change in particular to, to get that going? The way you interact. I mean, look at a mouse cursor. That's pixel point accuracy. Right. I don't have pixel point accuracy in one of these, okay? <laughs> no. And I'm sure you don't either. I do not. So, so be able to... figure. Yeah, I know. So. Sausage. <laughs> So being able to interact with programs had to change because it had to account for a much broader push. -point. Like that start menu, for like example. Like the start right? menu, for instance. When you click on the start menu, that little box paws up. It's about an eighth the size of your screen down in the lower corner. This is in the older versions of sure. Windows. And you had to select from a list of programs or control panel or document. Now, I don't know about you, but forget touch. Even with the mouse and even with bad eyesight using glasses, Oftentimes, I would try to hit one program and launch another. It's a really compact, space-efficient way to access your applications that was not even remotely designed for a fingertip. Right. Period. So they can upgrade the hardware, but as you say, can't upgrade your fingers. Can't right? upgrade your fingers. Can't so. make that smaller, skinnier, or whatever. No, not yet, anyway. So from that standpoint, that's just one example. Yeah. There's lots of other examples where you have to really rethink the entire operating system if you're going to do well, this. Well, and, and that's the thing. That's what Microsoft did, is they rethought the operating system from a standpoint of one platform that you essentially work with the same way, whether it's a mouse or, or, or a fingertip, on all devices. Right. So from the very small to the large, desktop, portable, all kinds of, of devices uses the same operating system. And fundamentally, you learn it once, and then you get the idea how to use all of them. Right. I think a lot of customers are saying, oh, I don't need touch. I'm not going to use it. But I found, I don't know, with my experience, the more I use it, yeah. the more I use it. And Absolutely. if I have a touch device or a touch screen or whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm constantly going back. And I'm even having uh, issues now where I'm using a device, uh, whether it's a tablet or a, a touch-enabled laptop or whatever, and then I'm back on my computer, and I can't tell you the number of times I've reached because I, I oh, keep sure. it's Oh, uh, sure, because you, you, you go to the most convenient avenue of, of doing whatever. But that's preference, right? It's not being forced to do anything, but you'll find you'll prefer it more and more. You're faster with it uh, once you learn Absolutely, because you, you find different, different intuitive ways of interacting with your data. And I can safely say I'm now past the point of ever wanting to go back to Windows 7. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. And I think most people will, too. Uh, the future is definitely touch and touch-enabled devices. So summarize this section, really. Microsoft had to make the change. Yep. The world's going to touch. The operating yep. systems have to reflect that. You can tell why uh, in those previous versions with the start button and other things. It just doesn't work when you have a big, you know, pointing yeah. device like a finger. And the other piece of it is if, if Microsoft had stuck with the classic mode, that would, that would grind change to a halt. Right. And there'd be no point to do touch. There'd be no point to move forward. All these wonderful devices that have come out in the last couple come of on, years. Come on, you want to go back to Windows 
three one one. What was that? Windows I, four I, groups. I you know I totally I do. I want to go yeah. back to Windows. You want a calculator big, that takes up the whole screen that, and the massive and I, button. And I want Micro Angelo to create my own little icons <laughs> and do little pictures and stuff. Totally want to do all that. No yeah. one wants to go back. We don't want to go back. It's hard sometimes to take that leap yeah, forward, but this really video is, is going to help you. So stick around to section two. And we'll dive into some of the navigational features, really show you what this new operating system can Absolutely. do. Absolutely.